Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. Adding and subtracting radical expressions, where you have to simplify the radicals first to see if they're like radicals. In these problems, we're going to be simplifying the square roots first to see if they have the same numbers under the radicals. If they do, and only if they do, then we can combine them by just like combining like terms. So what I need to do in example one is it looks like square root of 12 and square root of 75 are not the same radical. What I need to do is see if they really are the same radical just in disguise. Um, so let's just review how to do this. Square root of 12, I want to rewrite that as the product of two numbers such that one of them has a perfect square. Like for example, for 12 I could write that as square root of 6 times square root of 2, but that wouldn't help me simplify. Instead I'm going to write it as square root of 4 times square root of 3 because square root of 4 is regular 3, so that would be 2 root 3. Same idea with 75. Which perfect square goes into 75? 25 does. So I'm going to make that square root of 25 times 3, otherwise known as 5 root 3. So my problem now simplifies to 2 root 3 plus 5 root 3. Those numbers in my original problem didn't look like they had the same radicand, right? 12 and 75, those are different. But when I simplify it, I can see that it's really both root 3s. 2 root 3s plus 5 root 3, that's 7 root 3. Okay. Let's try another one. Square root of 80. Now I want to think of some perfect square that goes into 80. And some people think of 4, right? Square root of 4 times square root of 20. Now that'll work. It's just that 4 is not the largest perfect square that goes into 80. In fact, 16 goes into 80. I can make 80 square root of 16 times square root of 5. And then that's going to become 4 root 5. There's my first one simplified. The second one's a little trickier because it has that 3 out front. I'm going to ignore the 3 for now. Um, I'm going to look at the square root of 20 and turn that into the product of two numbers such that one of the numbers is a perfect square, like square root of 4 times square root of 5, because square root of 4 is just old 2. So now my second term is going to be 3 times 2 root 5, otherwise known as 6 root 5. Okay, so I have 4 root 5 minus 6 root 5, that's going to be negative 2 root 5. I could combine those because they were both root 5s. Let's try one last one. This one has three terms, so we'll see if all three of them can be combined. Maybe only two of them can. We'll see. 3 root 8. Okay, so instead of root 8, I'm going to make it root 4 times root 2. That's the same thing as 3 times 2 root 2 or 6 root 2. Next term, I have root 50, so I'm going to make that the product of two numbers, 25 and 2. That's going to become 5 root 2, and then I'm just going to rewrite it since I'm working vertically. My third term I have to deal with square root of 18, so I'm going to make that square root of 9 times square root of 2 because square root of 9 is regular old 3. So my last term outside my square root is negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6, and then root 2. Now look, all three of these guys happen to be the same radicand. They happen to be all root 2s. So moving from left to right, I would have 11 root 2 minus 6 root 2 which is 5 root 2. Now, before I leave you, I want to talk about how you could check this on your calculator. Try it on your calculator. Try typing in there, let's go back to example 1, try typing in there square root of 12. Um, if you have a graphing calculator, or uh, most of the scientific ones, you might need to close parentheses around that, plus square root of 75, whatever decimal you get, should be the same thing as when you do 7 times square root of 3. Check your work. That's a way you can make sure that those um, are indeed the same expression, just written in different ways. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off the airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be... Less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here, or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>